Teleporting to the Martha's Bay Warp Point, we head north and hop into the water where we can immediately see on the right the entrance to Catfish's Maw. The entrance is kind of like blocked a little bit so you have to dive underneath the water and go through just a little bit of the underwater section here. There's not even any enemies so just go ahead and hop through and we can start the dungeon. Immediately as we walk into the dungeon, the only way we can head is left, so we walk in to see three enemies. We can take them out if we want to, and we also see a chest that we can't reach until we get the item for the dungeon. So we head on into the next room. If you take out all of the keys here and even the little helmosaur, you can open the door on the left, which is going to be our only option since we don't have a small key for the top door just yet. So we're going to go ahead and head in there. Walking into this room, we see a spark patrolling the outer perimeter of the room, and there's two helmosaurs in the middle. Just make sure you hit them from behind so that way you can kill them, and then open the chest to find the compass. Next, we're going to head down that little staircase on the left here, which is going to take us to a little side-scrolling section. Uh, there's actually some weird mechanic here that you've probably never seen before. It's pretty straightforward, though. If you hop on one of the little uh, platforms, it's going to bring the other one up because you're weighing it down. So you kind of have to just make sure that it's all on the same level so that way you can make your way all the way across on this last little section here. And then we can head up this ladder into the next room. As we arrive in this next room, we see four Stolfos. Two of them are green and two of them are red. Uh, I can't remember if we've seen red Stolfos at this point, but if you are not familiar, pretty much all that happens is once you push them away, they will throw a bone at you, so you kind of just have to try to close the distance on them really quickly. Um, also, the little puzzle for this room, as you can see, you just move the blocks in to make a complete square on the middle, and that's going to drop us a small key. Head into this left room, and we're going to actually keep note of this in our heads, or we'll see it later once we get the map, but you can see these four little um, lit up sort of tiles. Uh, this is sort of like an indicator for what order we need to come to this room later, so just keep that in mind as we progress through the dungeon. Making our way back to the room where we needed the small key, we open up the door and head through to find another section where we can either head up or to the left. And uh, there's a couple of enemies here, you can go ahead and take them out if you want. And if you break these little uh, purple gems, you can actually drop items out of them sometimes. But from my experience, you don't get anything very often. So, I mean, if you need items really desperately, you can try that. Heading up into this next room, there's a couple of more Stolfos. If you want to, go ahead and make sure you take them out so that way you can open up the door at the top here again. And then we're going to head through to initiate some sort of reoccurring boss fight. Here we meet the Master Stolfos for the first time. He's going to be a reoccurring like little mini boss throughout the whole dungeon where we have to fight him four different times. So the trick here is that he's going to keep swinging at you as much as possible and he even has a shield to kind of block your attacks. Um, as you can see on the screen, I didn't really know what I was doing. But all you really have to do is get behind him and hit him once and then he kind of crumbles into a little pile. And from here you're going to use bombs to actually like deal the damage on him. Um, nothing else that I could find seemed to work and from looking it up it doesn't look like anything does work so just make sure you try to get behind him knock him down and then drop a bomb as soon as you can so that way he doesn't you know get back up before the bomb goes off and then uh, yeah do that three times I think it is each time you see him and then uh, pretty straightforward now that we're done with that we head into the next room on the right and get rid of a couple of green zoles and open up the chest to find a note that says that whatever was in the box has been stolen by Master Stolfos. So that's pretty much going to lead us on this wild goose chase to try to track him down to get whatever was in this box. Taking the staircase in the bottom right of the room first, we come out into a side-scrolling section where we actually see uh, there's a little bit of water in the bottom of the room and there's some cheap cheeps that will try to jump up and hit you I guess. Uh, just use your rocks feather to kind of help you jump across and then we'll emerge into a room with a couple of Stolfos. We can take them out if you want. We actually don't need to. It's not required or anything for this one. Um, and then we'll head into the room on the right. 
Entering this next room, we see a bubble flying around the room as well as three stars. Just take out the stars because the bubbles are invincible, I guess. And then uh, we see uh, one of the owl statues at the top, but we don't have the stone beak quite yet, so we're just going to keep heading to the right. In this room, we actually can go to the boss room, but because we don't have the nightmare key yet, we're just going to head down these stairs, and it's going to bring us out into this little side-scrolling section where there's a couple of Goombas, and uh, there's not a whole lot in here, so we're just going to head up this other ladder and we're going to emerge out into another room where there is a red zole and a couple of pots we break these and move one of the blocks down and we can kill another red zole as you can see the top left room is locked so we're going to explore a little bit in here Heading through the doorway on the left, we see a couple of red zoles here, and there's actually a Beemos that will shoot at us a little bit. Uh, there's a little power-up that'll uh, give us 10 extra arrows if we need it, so just remember where that is if you want to get some more arrows. Uh, heading through this little door on the left, there's a couple of blade traps here. I'm pretty sure you're meant to have the item for the dungeon to really do this effectively, but I mean, if you want to do what I did and just take a whole bunch of damage first, you can, I guess. But once you make it to the other side, the door on the left is obviously already locked, so we can head up top and head to the left, but as you can see, we need the grappling hook, so we're just going to backtrack a little bit and go back to that other room. From here, now our only option is to head down, so we go out into a room where there's a couple blade traps on the corners of the room, so watch out moving cl too close to the walls, and there's also a couple helmosaurs, so get rid of them. We're going to head through this door on the left. In this room, we see a spark running around a couple of the blocks here, and there's two helmosaurs and also a bomb power-up. This is going to be helpful, just in case you need more bombs to fight the Master Stalfos later, so remember you can come back here to grab more of those if you need. Uh, after killing all of the helmosaurs, you will actually see a chest appear, which gives us the Stone Beak. Really quickly, we're going to head over to the room where the Master Stalfos took the item, and we're going to head up from here. This is going to show us a room with two sparks that are kind of moving around a little area, and we push the block up out of the way, and we move over to the left, which is really our only option because the other door was locked. In here, there's a couple of different um, of those little squishy obstacles and a couple of Stalfos. And then moving up from here, we see a couple of these little water skater enemies. Uh, and you can actually get in the water and dive down here into a little side-scrolling section that'll bring us out into another area. Unfortunately though, once we get up to the other side, we realize that there's nothing we can do there just yet until we get the grappling hook. So just make your way back to the other side. Heading up from here, we emerge on one side of the room where we see a green zole, but there's pots blocking the way for us to move any of these uh, little blocks, so we're going to have to backtrack a little bit until we get to that little intersection with the two sparks. So entering this room now, since the puzzle has reset, we can push it and we can either go down or up. We go ahead and push that button, which will open up the door, and we head up from here, which brings us out into a really long room with a bunch of Stalfos enemies, and there's a star flying around. So get rid of them as you see fit, and then we can head all the way up and to the left into another room. Heading to the left into this room, we realize that this is the other half of the room we were just in a second ago. So we take out the two green zoles that hop out of the floor, and then we move a pot, and we can move this block over and take out the other green zole to unlock the door. Heading up into this room, we see a Master Stalfos room. Uh, it has three of the little icons here, so this is going to be the place where we need to go for the third encounter. Heading to the left into this room, though, we can kill a couple of these Stalfos and open the chest to get the map which is going to be very helpful in this dungeon because it's very big. Making our way back down to the intersection, we move the block down this time and we can head over to the room on the right. This is actually the Master Stalfos 2 room, and I'll go ahead and skip this because there's not really any reason to watch me fight this again. Same basic concept, hit him, then bomb him, and then you're good to go. So, as you guessed it, we're just going to go ahead and immediately go up to that third room that we were just in a minute ago and go ahead and beat him for the third time, which is only going to leave him one more time to fight, and then we'll get the grappling hook. So, take care of that really quickly and you're good to move on to the fourth room. So, of course, same basic concept, do your thing. And upon completing him this time, he's going to blow up and drop the hook shot on the ground. And this is going to be super helpful because not only is it going to help you in the dungeon, but it helps with a couple of certain enemies and it'll actually like kind of put them into this little confused state if you hit them, which kind of like stuns them for a second. And uh, it's also really great for some of the stuff that we're going to find out in the overworld. 
Uh, there's a couple of different areas that it's going to help us get to. So yeah, let's uh, head back to that first little room and we should be able to get that chest that we saw at the very beginning of the dungeon. So walking over here, we learn that you can actually shoot the hookshot at a chest and it will bring you over. Opening the chest, we get a free hundred rupees. So then we shoot our way back across and we can head on into the dungeon to kind of finish this up. In the room with the 10 arrows power up, we can now pull this uh, little platform across with our hook shot and break that pot to get a free fairy. From here, we're going to go uh, back into the room again and head over to the left where we saw those blade traps earlier and see if we can make our way across this time. Heading over into the left room, we use the hook shot to grab the chest, and then opening the chest, it's going to give us a small key. This is going to help us unlock that little block uh, keyhole that we saw earlier. Uh, go ahead and get rid of the rest of these little enemies, and you can break these pots for some items if you want, but then we're going to backtrack a little bit to that room. Head back to this room and keep heading up, and then we can head over to the left here and unlock this block. And then this is actually going to lead us to the mini boss room where we fight two Golmas. This is kind of a weird fight because they do kind of different stuff. Um, they use the, mainly the same attacks, but when they open their eye, just shoot the hookshot at them to kind of like stun them for a second and then move in close for a couple attacks. Uh, once you get rid of the one in the back, I tried to go for the back one first just to make it a little bit easier on myself. But once you get rid of one of them, you can kind of rinse and repeat with the other one. Just watch out because in, sometimes instead of shooting the little fireballs at you they'll actually move towards you instead and they don't open their eye for that so you can't stun them out of it so you kind of just have to jump and run out of the way making our way back over to this really long room since we have the hook shot now we can go in here and get a couple of these chests the first one is just going to give you a free 50 rupees which is fine i guess and then pulling the platform above that we can open another chest to get another 50 rupees Heading back down and going to the right, we can hookshot our way across this little gap and we can open this chest to get a small key. Making our way back to this room towards the top of the map, closer to the boss room, we can actually walk over here and unlock this little uh, block with a keyhole in it. I don't really know what to call those. Um, but as you can see, we don't have the nightmare key yet, so we're not going to be able to get in there just yet. So we need to do a little bit more backtracking to get that. So after wasting about 10 minutes of my own time going through and trying to walk through every single staircase in the place trying to get back to this room that I couldn't remember how to get back to, we dive down into the water and we go across to find the room where we couldn't hook shot across in the first place. So now we can go ahead and get past that. So head up this ladder, shoot our hook shot across to pull the bridge, and then we can head over here to open the chest. And you guessed it, we get the nightmare key. So, heading back to the room that was uh, we were just in a minute ago, we can hookshot across and open up the door to the boss room. So, after a little bit of talking with the boss, we see the floor erupt out and we see the tail of a huge monster kind of start flinging around the room and we see his head bust out these four walls. This is the slime eel and uh, I was actually kind of confused on how to beat this at first because I, I was expecting you to have to place a bomb in front of the wall that he was coming out of and then he would eat it because he does that little eating animation but I was completely incorrect and of course you have to use the item that you get in the dungeon which is the hook shot so um, pretty much what you do is you shoot the hook shot at him when he opens his mouth and it pulls him towards you and it will expose like a little uh, section of his body that is a different color and then you just hit that section a couple of times until he retreats back into the wall rinse and repeat this a couple of times and then you're good to go as always, don't forget to grab your heart piece once you beat the boss, and then we can head up into this next room to see our instrument. Walking through the door, up on the pedestal, as all of the instruments are, we acquire the Wind Marimba. After hearing the little tune that it plays, it's going to turn the screen white, and it's going to say something about a shrine that the secret to the island is hidden inside the shrine. So, from here, that pretty much completes this guide to the Catfish's Maw. I hope this helped you guys out in some way, and thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, there's a couple of things that we're going to do outside of the dungeon-related stuff in the next couple of episodes, so stay tuned for that. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next guide.